Our planet is covered in water. This water is what gives life to every living creature on it. Without it, nothing here would live. It is a source of extreme beauty where many colorful and interesting things live. It is as deep as it is vast and it's incomprehensibly big. It's also violent and dangerous. Throughout our entire existence, we've attempted to traverse and tame these oceans. But the ocean has a fierce temper, and it constantly reminds us that at any moment, that temper can lash out. So what is thalassophobia? It comes from the Greek words thalassa, which means sea, and phobos, which means fear. So the literal translation is fear of the sea, but that's a bit too simplistic. According to the Psychiatric Bible, which dictates how all psychological conditions are classified, the DSM-5, thalassophobia is defined as a persistent, excessive and unreasonable fear of deep water. Sufferers of this phobia often have a very varied experience of what this means to them, but there are some common threads which link them all together. Essentially, it's being scared of the bleak, dark and unforgiving ocean. And maybe that means being afraid of being stuck in the middle of it, or being stuck in the deep of it. Maybe it means being afraid of being trapped underneath it and drowning. Maybe it means being lost at sea and the eerie sounds that you might hear while trapped there. Or maybe it means being afraid of what might lurk inside it. A lot of things about this phobia make logical sense, and if I do my best to turn off the parts of my brain that make me feel like panic vomiting, we can explore it. To begin with, human beings don't belong in the ocean. Our bodies can barely withstand even the slightest bit of depth pressure before we're crushed to death. The average person can't hold the breath for more than a minute or so, and our limbs are not suited to traversing underwater. Literally everything which lives in the ocean can do all those things. Some of those horrific creatures actually live down there, permanently. When you're in the ocean, you have to realize you are its plaything, and the ocean has a very cold heart. For as long as I can remember, I've hated underwater sections of every single video game I've ever played. I used to chalk it up to panicking about my character drowning, but I realised over time that when I played games with no danger of drowning, my palms would still get cold and sweaty, my heart would still race and I would constantly feel an intense nausea deep in my stomach that would eventually force me to quit, even though there's zero danger whatsoever to me or my character. This was about when I realised I had a phobia that I'd never heard of, and never really been able to properly convey to people. I still didn't really know what in particular caused it, but I know it started with a few things. I saw Jaws when I was very young, because I was fascinated by sharks. I still am. And while the movie did give me some pretty intense nightmares well into my early 20s, it didn't really trigger the phobia, just kind of made me aware of it. Interestingly, the image which I always found the most striking and scary from the movie was this one. I both love and hate this shot. Now that famous dolly zoom of Chief Brody as he sees the kitna boy disappear in a bath of blood, that perfectly exemplifies how I feel 
when I see that overhead shot. It's superb camera work, and it was the very first thing to properly trigger my phobia. Images like this are common triggers for people with this phobia. During Jaws, Quint tells a particularly harrowing story of his time serving aboard the USS Indianapolis. The Indianapolis was a World War II cruiser assigned with the task of delivering parts of one of the atomic bombs which would eventually be dropped on the innocent people of Hiroshima. On the 30th of July 1945, just after midnight, the Indianapolis was returning from its mission when the ship suffered two large explosions as torpedoes from a nearby Japanese submarine hit their target, causing massive damage. Because it was midnight and pitch black, this caused massive panic, as nobody knew what had happened. In just 12 minutes, the ship was pulled to its grave at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, taking 300 sailors with it. The 900 which escaped had a much more terrifying fate waiting for them. Many of the crew had fuel in their eyes and injuries from the explosion, and they quickly succumbed to their injuries. The ones who remained assumed that Navy Rescue would pick them up the following morning once notice of their sinking reached the Navy. However, the ship sunk so quickly, and with so many of its crew unprepared, that no message was ever sent to the Navy, and due to how naval ships were tracked during this time, the Navy had no knowledge of its sinking until three days later. The first day some of the crew died of dehydration, but many lived. It was during this first day that they would see the first sharks arrive. Survivors described the sharks as being 15 feet long. On the first day, sharks ate the dead. The ones who were still alive floated silently and listen to the sound of hungry tiger sharks ripping apart the bodies of their dead friends. Some of the men were so terrified of what they saw and heard that they just unbuckled their life jackets and voluntarily sank to their death. On the first night, the remaining sailors would come to understand what fate was waiting for them as tiger sharks would come from beneath them and pull them down to be eaten alive as they drowned beneath the waves. Of the 900 men that went into the Pacific Ocean, only 316 were rescued alive. Hungry tiger sharks took the rest. The story of the Titanic is possibly one of the most horrific stories ever recorded. A disastrous tragedy which encased 1,500 of its passengers inside a cold metal sarcophagus as it sank into the icy depths of the Atlantic Ocean. I read this story when I was about eight because I was making a presentation about it for class at school. I read every book I could find on the topic and each one gave me a thirst for more information. It was only when I came across survivor accounts that I got that horrible, intense nausea and cold sweats again. It's really hard to hear the stories of lower class passengers being trapped below decks with no option but to wait until the ship sank. Thinking of those people trapped, hugging their loved ones as they listen to the ship's steel creak and snap under the stress and pressure. painful terror of waiting to find out if they were going to be crushed to death by the immense pressure of the deep Atlantic, or if they would feel the icy finger of death creep into their lungs and suffocate them. Even if you escape the initial sinking, the Atlantic was filled with ice, 
and the shock of hitting the cold water would literally stop your heart or cause uncontrollable breathing of the freezing water around you. And there, you would die in the pitch black night submerged in the freezing Atlantic Ocean. There are channels here on YouTube that run real-time simulations of the Titanic sinking, and when I first stumbled across them I didn't for one second think that I would find a three-hour CGI video of a ship sinking to be equal parts captivating and terrifying. I watched the entire thing, and it got more and more uncomfortable for me the longer it went on. By the end it was almost unbearable. By the time the bow had raised upright, ready to sink, Every cell in my body was screaming at me to turn it off. When National Geographic printed this photo of the bow of the Titanic, it immediately caught my attention. And before long, those feelings of intense dread started to creep over me. This photo of the Titanic encapsulates a lot of what thalassophobia sufferers are afraid of. The bow section of the sunken leviathan is roughly 470 feet long, yet the ocean is so deep and infinitely dark that we can see less than 5% of it in this photo. We can see only a tiny fragment of a massive structure because the ocean is so vast and there is almost zero visibility even with powerful lights. The idea that something so huge could be so close to you and yet be completely hidden is a large factor in thalassophobia. If such a small amount of ocean can hide such a massive structure, then what else could it hide? While a lot of people would probably think it's pretty reasonable that I do everything that I can to avoid boats, this fear, like all phobias, manifests itself in unreasonable ways all the time. I struggle to look at some photos. Certain movies are insanely difficult for me to watch because I genuinely feel like throwing up the entire time. And underwater sections in video games are nightmare fuel. More so if the water is murky or dark. When Open Water was first released, I remember a lot of people saying it was kind of lame, but it terrified me. I never understood why. I found it terrifying and yet everyone else seemed to find it boring. In particular these final few moments where you catch a glimpse of a shark at the surface, only to see many more hidden beneath the waves, is horrifying for people like me. For me personally, a huge part of thalassophobia is about how deep the ocean is. It's easy to forget just how vast the oceans are. Our planet's surface is about 70% water, and it's such an extreme amount that it's really difficult for us to properly comprehend it. The deepest part of the ocean that we're aware of is called the Mariana Trench, which lies east of the Philippines. The deepest point of the deepest ocean is called Challenger Deep, and it's 35,827 feet deep. For context, the tallest point on Earth is Mount Everest, which is 29,032 feet tall. If we dropped Everest into Challenger Deep, it wouldn't fill it. The bottom of this trench is one of the most inhospitable places on Earth. The temperature is slightly above freezing, and sunlight can't reach this deep, so it's pitch black. Think about that for a second. Sunlight has no problem travelling 150 million kilometres through space, through our atmosphere, to reach Earth, but it can't even make 35,000 feet to the bottom of the ocean. It's a void which even sunlight can't penetrate. There's also an incredible 15,750 pounds per square inch of pressure. And just in case that number doesn't mean anything to you, an Argentinian nuclear submarine, called the San Juan, was crushed to death at just 1,323 pounds per square inch. This bleak, pitch infinity is what makes the ocean terrifying. Photographs like these 
make my skin crawl all over and instill a deep feeling of absolute dread to my very core. I can't even look at these photos for too long because I start to feel physically nauseated. The idea of sinking into a freezing pitch black infinity is a horrible thought. For a lot of us, it's the thought of how deep and cold the water can be. A lot of people's first account of being aware of this odd phobia usually begin with the swim at the beach. They swim out to sea like everyone else. It begins as a fun, relaxing experience. Just you, the sound of the water gently lapping and waves breaking. In the distance, you can hear the low buzz of people on the beach, which you can hear, but nothing individual. It's just ASMR-like background noise as the sun beams down its warmth onto your back. Then you look down into the water beneath you, and where you're expected to see sand, maybe coral and some smaller fish, you see the black, empty void staring back at you. Your breathing starts to increase. Your heart races. You didn't notice the drop in temperature until now. And for a moment, you're frozen on the spot, unable to move as if paralyzed by the terrifying infinity beneath your feet. When you feel able to move again, the sheer panic sets in and you thunder to shore as fast as you can, hoping nothing happens to you. Only when you feel your feet hit sand again, does your heart rate start to slow. This example is a very common first encounter with this phobia. The shock of meeting the dark cold abyss face to face can be a powerful feeling. Part of what drives this phobia is that down in the deep dark unknown of the abyss are terrifying creatures. It's a vast, unexplored territory and we really have no idea what lives down there. What creatures we have seen are nightmarish things which look unnatural and seem designed to horrify you to your core. In the shallows, you can expect to find something which most people are afraid of out of the water the sea spider, who will creep across the ocean floor towards your toes using their huge 50 centimeter legs. This species of spider lives in the ocean and feeds by inserting a long tube into its prey and literally sucking out its insides while it's alive. Venture down to the continental shelf for a photo like these divers and you might catch the attention of a creature which looks like it steps straight out of Ridley Scott's Alien. The goblin shark can be found in pretty much every ocean in the world, as shallow as the continental shelf and as deep as 3,000 feet. This species of shark is thought to be a poor swimmer and uses a naturally buoyant liver to float silently through the ocean until it's within striking range of its prey, at which point it catapults its lower jaw forward so that its backwards facing teeth can sink into its flesh, preventing it from escaping. At around 6,500 feet deep, you can find the world's largest known cephalopod, known as the colossal squid. These huge monsters of the deep lurking beneath the waves can reach over 40 feet in length and weigh a full ton. These squid are large enough that they are the main diet of sperm whales. They were thought not to exist until 1925 because in the deep ocean, it's very easy to hide. Any one of these creatures could be lurking literally just a few feet away from you and you would never see it coming until it decides to take you. A subset of this phobia is the irrational fear of sunken man-made items, usually machinery. This phobia is known as submechanophobia. The sight of derelict machines designed to tame the fierce oceans, sitting sunken and hollow at the bottom of the ocean, can be quite a haunting experience and a reminder that man was never really supposed to ride the waves, as even our greatest technologies 
can be wrecked by an angry sea in just a matter of minutes. One of the biggest factors for thalassophobia sufferers is the sheer vastness of the ocean. Point Nemo is a part of the ocean in which you're so far away from any living person that you're actually closer to the astronauts on the Mir space station than you are to any living human on Earth. This provokes very primal fears of the unknown, of the dark, and of being alone. There have been cultures throughout history that treat mountains as deities and celebrate them. People who scale mountains like Everest often describe the experience as spiritual and majestic. Most people don't even want to attempt to visit the deepest ocean. And throughout history, water and oceans are depicted as violent, life-threatening places which must be endured rather than experienced. There is no environment on Earth that can feel life-threatening, alien, beautiful, haunting, and terrifying all at the same time. There are no places more vast, and no other environment has destroyed so many technologies designed to tame it. Despite being the most vast environment on Earth, its desolate appearance and bleak visibility make it feel like a very claustrophobic place. Thalassophobia isn't really the idea that there are creatures in the ocean, or that the ocean is deep or dark. It's that the ocean is all these things. It's the thought that despite our intellect and ingenuity, despite our mastery of the food chain and technology, we never really know what is lurking right beneath us. That even our grandest inventions are no match for the dark abyss and the horrors contained within.